One thing we really wanted to do in 2017 is we wanted to actually bring 3D printers to our store because it's a big part of the hobby now. You can print actual planes, components, mm -hmm. or even things like this. Or even this. <laughs> but most likely if you're in the hobby, you're gonna be printing something like this mm -hmm. for your planes or your multi-rotors. So what we got today is our Forge 3D. This is now available on our store along with all the filaments you need. We're gonna show you how to put it together in under 10 minutes. Let's get started. So one good thing about this printer is the manual that is made for it. And you can go to the store, download the manual, and it will pretty much walk you through step by step on everything you need to go from setting up to printing your first print. It's very well written, very easy to understand. Yes. All right, so obviously the first thing to do is gonna to be to unpackage the box. Make sure when you're unpackaging this, you use your knife, but don't cut too deeply because the packaging is just under the surface of the box. There's a lot of wires. There is a lot of wires. You don't wanna puncture those. Also, within the box, you're gonna find individual boxes. This thing is beautifully packed. Mm -hmm. And also, the main components are all connected by a ribbon cable. So as you carefully remove it, make sure you're not pulling and pulling something out because it's connected to the rest of the substructure. You're gonna have three flexible structures that you're gonna lay on an open table before we get started. First thing we're gonna do is once you get the printer set up on your table, cut the big zip tie that's holding the actual extruder to the plate. Once you've cut your big zip tie, spread everything out, keeping in mind that it is connected through a ribbon cable. Yeah, there's cables everywhere. You don't wanna get anything tied up, tangled up, or pinched. Now that we have the cable uh, cut and everything spread out, go ahead and insert the printed bed lengthwise through the extruder tower and line it up with the bolt holes. You wanna insert the two external bolts and tighten them using the included hex wrench or if you have your own. Yeah, a good tip is to make sure that you don't tighten everything down too tight before you get all the bolts through. Pretty much just like a tire. Yeah. So once you have the two external bolts snugged up, you want to tilt it on its side and get the two internal bolts snugged up and then you can tighten all four. At this point, you're only going to have two extra screws and that's mm -hmm. going to be for the little coil holder on the top. Now on the bottom of the table, you're going to see a zip tie that's holding three connectors together. It's actually going to be A, B, and D. That's going to go on the right side of the printer. And on the other side, you have C, which there is no zip yeah. tie. All you need to do is plug A into A, B into B, and mm -hmm. C into C, and then go on the other side, plug in D. They've made it very simple. Once you have all the wires plugged into their corresponding spots, then we want to get the filament spool holder yep. out. And there's two parts. You have a metal bracket and a plastic holder with a nut. Yep. Yep. Unscrew your plastic nut and then pass it through on the opposite side of where the bracket bends. And then tighten your nut down, leaving the nice radius top edge uh, to hold the spool. And then when you install your spool holder on top of your 3D printer, you want the spool holder to be towards the center so the nuts are on the outside. Now the version that we sell in our store is the US version. So you're gonna wanna make sure that it's switched over to 110 volts. And it should be out of the box, but don't take anything for granted. Always, Always check double it. check it. All right, so now the main body of the 3D printer is all done. Mm -hmm. What comes next? So we have our voltage, everything set up correctly. Okay. Now we just plug it in, turn it on. Okay, now that you have your printer turned on. Just press the knob in. Press the knob in. You wanna use it to come to position, press it in again, and then home all. Press it one more time. Now that's gonna take it down all the way to the lower limit stop. Make sure when you're putting this together, if there's any tape on your limit sensors, that you remove it. Ours didn't have any of that tape, but it did say that in the instructions. Yeah, exactly. So once it's down to that point on the bed, you wanna turn the printer off. And then get a regular sheet of paper. Typical paper. What is that? One tenth of one millimeter or something like that? Yeah, 0 0.1 millimeter is what they call for. Okay. And you're going to use that paper to slide it between the extruder and the print bed, and you want to feel just a little bit of friction. Do your first adjustment on the front corner where the home position was started. Then slide it all the way to the back of the rear frame and do the same side that way. Once you're done with that, move it over to the far side, your print nozzle. And then you want to come to the fourth corner. Once you get the fourth corner done, bring the print the extruder to the center of the bed and check the center. If it's not right, you don't have that little bit of friction on the paper, then just go through all four corners again. This can get tedious and you may want to quit, but it's a very, very extremely important step. And this will be the difference of a successful print and a unsuccessful yeah. print. Now that our table's all level, we're going to install the filament next. Yes. And what we have is PLA. That's what we carry PLA. on the store. There's right now seven different colors that we wow. offer. Okay. Yeah. So quite a bit. Uh, PLA is great for beginners. It's an easier filament to print. There's not really as much you need to adjust to get it to print correctly. And also it doesn't produce fumes while it's printing. That's a big deal. Yeah, so you know, if there is other types of filament you use or you'd like to see on the store, let us know in the comments. So whether you have the spool that you bought or the included filament reel that come with the printer, we're gonna take it and just leave it to where the filament's rolling off the top to the front of the printer and we'll hang it on our filament holder. 
just like I did during the setup, I put my hands on both sides of the uh, extruder nozzle and just kind of lift it up a little bit to give us some room between the extruder and the print bed. Now that the, uh, the nozzle's raised up and ready to receive it, we're gonna need to preheat the nozzle and the bed first. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and press the, uh, the main button, right. go into our menus, and then we're gonna go down to quick settings. And then we're gonna go to preheat PLA. Right, and it has all your settings in there. So the extruder will heat up to 215 degrees Celsius. Yep. And the bed will heat up at the same time to 60 degrees Celsius. With that said, that means both surfaces are gonna be extremely hot. So keep your hands away. So once your nozzle and your bed are within a few degrees, you can go ahead and take your filament spool or the included filament that they give you and hang it on your little filament holder here. With one hand, take it down and you're gonna notice a top hole really close to the extruder. That's gonna be the holder you're gonna to wanna to feed it into. Line it and kind of bend the filament so it glides down nice and easy. And then with your other hand, press the execute button. Right. You want to push the, the menu button, go down to extruder and X, XTR position. Yes. And what this is going to allow you to do is that menu button just changed into a feeder. A feeder. Yeah. 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 You're kind of rolling. Basically, you're going to roll it. And every time you have one click, it'll roll one millimeter forward. Right. Now you got to fill up obviously the nozzle, but also the kind of like the little cavity there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be rolling it there. Just, just go click a second or so and let it slowly feed in. And then once you notice that there's starting to be some PLA coming out of the bottom, go ahead and continue to turn that. And you, you pull a couple centimeters of, of right. material through the actual nozzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we use blue. You'll notice it comes out kind of like a white clear. And after a little bit, you'll see blue come out. Yeah. So once your blue is a few centimeters out of the extruder, you want to pretty much just stop. Yeah, you're done. And then yeah. you took a little cloth and then you wiped off the nozzle. Right. And as we said before, it's very, very hot. So just use a cloth to clean off your nozzle and then you're done. Yeah. One thing I would encourage you is when you wipe off the nozzle, don't push the cloth up into the nozzle. Wipe down kind of adjacent, swipe in the stuff off of the nozzle, pulling it away. Right. That way you don't get lint trapped up in your nozzle. That's a very, very fine tip. All right, so in this portion, we're going to be showing you how to go ahead and load your very first file and print it. Mm -hmm. You get something like you see right here. So included with the uh, 3D Forge machine, you're going to get a, uh, a little SD card adapter, but inside that is a little mini SD card. Now, this is also going to be the software that you need for your computer, so make sure you don't lose this. We're going to insert the little mini SD card into the side of the machine. Once we've inserted our little mini SD card, we're going to press the navigation button. We're going to scroll down to SD card at the very bottom, hit enter, mount card, enter again print file now the third file listed here is this little m3 lock nut screw it only takes six minutes right the nice thing about that you're not really invested one thing i strongly encourage you if you have a problem once you start printing don't let it continue to print right. you're just going to waste material and time so we're going to go ahead and press enter you're going to see that it goes back to the main page and it says printing it's going to actually cool the temperature down get the table temperature the nozzle temperature where it needs to be and from that point on it's going to go down on its own and start printing and if everything works out great six minutes later you have a m3 finger nut yes and if it doesn't and it starts spitting extruder you know extruded filament everywhere the easiest way we found to cancel the print is just to turn it off yes. let it cool down clean up the area relevel your bed whatever it takes to get it to print correctly once it does you have a finished product on the bed you want to let the extruder and the bed cool down to room temperature okay this is going to allow you to be able to remove the part off of the bed a lot easier than if it's still heated. Yeah, if your part's still heated up and nice and warm, what mm -hmm. you're going to notice is when you scrape it off, you could possibly warp your part right. and kind of mess it up a little bit. Yep, and ours has been sitting here for quite a while now, so we're ready to remove it. They even give you a little scraper tool. Now, don't dig it in on the angle, right? Nice mm -hmm. and flat, right? Yep, yep. You want to go nice and flat with it. Don't push too hard because you can damage the bed. They do include a new a secondary sticker, I guess. Yep. But once you remove it, you have the finished product. Friends, we want to sincerely thank you for watching. We want to encourage you to. The DIY world, whether it's model aviation or just, just general DIY, 3D printers are going to become a staple in the near future. And we hope this helped you guys get over the boundaries of putting this together and having a great experience. Yeah, and if there's anything that you have as far as tips or different filaments, let us know in the comments. Yeah, we're really eager to see that. Now, we're going to do additional videos because we don't want to just print off of what they include in the SD card. We actually want to take you one step further. Our goal with Flight Test is to combine the world of foam board airplanes and 3D printed parts to give you even a better experience of more scale looking airplanes. Also, really cool functions that you just simply can't recreate easily without a 3D printer. So stay tuned for that. So if you want to keep up on the next videos coming out as far as the first RC parts, be sure and hit the subscribe button and you'll notice a little bell beside the subscribe button. Click that to be able to get any notifications that come along with our channel. We'll see you next time. Bye.